Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EVN Disrupt podcast. My name is Nizhda Zaturyan. I'm the editor of the Creative Tech section here at EVN Report. My guest today was Chinag Movsisyan, the founder and CEO of Manot. Manot is a platform that helps companies that use artificial intelligence improve their data pipeline by identifying areas of their data sets that could fail in real world environments. They also provide insights on what data needs to be collected in order to improve the accuracy of their models. This is a very technical product, so we dove into a lot of examples of how Manot improves AI systems that you may already be familiar with, such as self-driving cars. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and thank you for listening. Chinag, thank you so much for being here today. Nishdet, thank you so much for inviting me here, and it's really cool uh, to be at your podcast. Thank you, Chinag. Let's start with a little bit of your background. Tell us what you studied in school and how you got to the startup world. So let's start from university. Yeah. So um, I'm a tech guy. My background is applied mathematics, informatics. I have got my bachelor at Yerevan State University, Faculty of Informatics and Applied Mathematics. And then first master I did here, again, in Armenia at Yerevan State University at the same faculty. And then parallelly, I applied to a second master. It was in France. A second master is in computer science and systems, also some stuff under security. And currently, I'm pursuing my PhD. Hopefully, I'll get it soon, towards autumn, let's say. And it's being supervised um, by Sosa Gayan from New York City University. But formally, I'm a student at Slavonic University here in Armenia. That's the Russian Armenian University. Yeah, here. exactly. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's start with your undergrad days. When you were an undergrad student, was there any startup activity on campus that got you interested in entrepreneurship? Since undergraduate or my bachelor, I was interested in in entrepreneurship, in deep tech stuff. And uh, one of my supervisors told me that there is a startup that I can join. Uh, Not just a startup, but some small company that I can join. And that was my first company. And they were working on, uh, again, computer vision problems especially uh, focused on drone data, UAV data. That was the first experience that I got. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you share with us the name of the startup? High Intelligence. High Intelligence. Yeah. Is it still around? Yeah. It's still around, yeah. Okay. And then you went on to, to do your master's. What was your first master's in NYSU? Yerevan State University, it was in uh, information technology, mainly related to to the programming, in general programming. Mm-hmm. The second master was uh, focused on how to link AI to systems, for example, EDA, for example, riders, mainly like... like signal processing. Yeah, signal processing, yeah, practical one, mm-hmm. not much theoretical stuff on there. Yeah. Then what made you want to do your PhD? Like continuation of your academic path uh, that is really interesting for me and I wanted to not just finish but continue it because a lot of stuff that I have in my company in my startup uh, it comes from my academic knowledge skills so I decided to have it too. It's a really interesting that so many machine learning startups start off as thesis projects in grad school a lot of people might think that machine learning is a new field, mm-hmm. but really it's been around for many, many decades now. It's just in the last sort of five to 10 years, we've been able to do good production level machine learning and specifically deep learning. But there's still so much R&D work to be done. There's still so much scientific work to be done that so many grad students end up sometimes even dropping out of their PhDs to pursue their startups. Do you think if someone is interested in doing a deep learning startup, do you think the PhD route Um, even if they don't end up becoming academics, is the best way to do it? Absolutely. It's not just the best way, but it is the the start of your company, of your startup. In order to make a good startup that can be evolved into something bigger, you should have some academic, some theoretical, practical one. Start from theoretical one. So you need to have uh, good research stuff. You need to to see what kind of stuff are there uh, in general and then try to evolve it, to enlarge it into into something bigger, into Mm -hmm. more practical one that can be helpful for any industry. It it can be smart agriculture, healthcare, or surveillance security. Right. So we'll get to your startup in a second, but uh, you said that your 
thesis supervisor is um, from the States, it's mm-hmm. from NYU? Uh, yeah, yeah, New York City University. Okay. And how did you go about finding a supervisor outside of uh, your home university? Yeah, in fact, there are guys from Slavonic University, especially the head of, of the Institute of uh, Mathematics. They introduced me to uh, him and we started to work together. Have you found it productive to work with someone that's not from your home university? Like, is it as easy as working with a professor that's on staff at your university? Uh, it's not easy, but... It's you, doable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> handle it. Right. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, and what's your thesis on? Uh, my thesis is in um, integration of AI into healthcare. The main goal is to have some system that can be integrated into clinics and that can uh, help the doctors to make decisions efficiently in terms of cardiovascular problems, mm. like to see uh, what are the main predictors that can contribute to uh, disease progression, like screening models that can be helpful for uh, for further analysis. And is this something that you're working with any hospitals on, on trying yeah, to uh, yeah, see if it uh, works? Cardio Institute of Yerevan, uh, we are working with them. There are some doctors, professors. Yeah. They are interested in these subjects too, uh, so we are collaborating because this subject depends on domain expertise. Right. So you need to, uh, to have someone professional from that domain because I don't have much knowledge regarding that cardiovascular, yeah, disease. cardiovascular heart disease problem. So right. their input is really uh, helpful and yeah. crucial. I'm curious, is it easy working with Armenia's healthcare system to do that kind of work with data and and implementing models? Uh, I would say that working with other domain guys like doctors or it can be, for example, experts from real estate, etc., it's difficult because their understanding in terms of what we are doing in machine learning, right. in AI is a little bit different. Right. Yeah, So they can have some requirements which are not... Uh, so acceptable or right. feasible to do. So there are some stuff on there that we right. we have to deal. But right, I understand. Okay, let's get to your startup, uh, Manit. What's the founding story of Manit? How did you guys come up with this idea to uh, yeah. to build this company? I mentioned that I have been working on projects requiring like data preparation, management, computer vision stuff related to the drones, UAVs. And like the story behind Mount goes uh, to the time when I was working on that kind of project, struggling with like time consumption, accuracy. And always I have had that problem in my working projects, everyday work. So I was back to Armenia in 2020, September, uh, after getting my second master. And I was planning to start my PhD, but uh, there were some some offers from my university, Grenoble University in France. And then the war started. Right. Uh, when the war started, I decided not to start my PhD at Grenoble University and I did, decided to stay here. So and you were planning on doing your PhD yeah, in France? Yeah, because yeah. I, I had some offers from there, right. from laboratory of ELSIS Laboratory of Grenoble University and some stuff on there related to the industry because I, yeah. uh, I was working on industry too. Yeah. During the war, we had a lot of problems. We saw that the need in the country and computer vision part related to drones, UAVs, as I had a lot of like research uh, experience. stuff, experience, background, I was familiar with the things. After the war, I, I decided to start something which will be helpful, especially which will be like related to the computer vision part, especially for drones. And that was like, I had that energy, yeah. I had that idea, mm. the goal, like, uh, I'll do that. I started this company, Startup. What it is that mm-hmm. uh, man it does? Yeah. What problem uh, are you guys trying to solve? I talked a lot about the drones UAV. So yeah. in general, any AI models, uh, when it is being deployed in real world, it can have a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. in terms of like if, for example, the autonomous vehicle can mistake for example, there are a lot of videos in the in the YouTube can mistake the moon for a traffic light. Right. So why this is happening? 
because initially, during development of, of the computer vision part of the t- autonomous vehicle, the training set initially didn't have any yeah. samples related to the moon or right. I don't know. So our goal, the Manot system, uh, observes the environment filters out the necessary information, the complementary images that can be immediately incorporated back to the model, to the mm-hmm. computer vision model, to improve the accuracy. In two words, we can say diagnostics of any AI model, but at this point we are targeting the computer vision part and we are trying to help the businesses to find out the complementary data that the model is going to operate in. So let's take uh, the self-driving car example. When a company like Tesla is training their neural nets for for a self-driving car, they have tons and tons of data of cars driving regularly. They look at the stop signs, where the traffic lights are, other cars, people and stuff. And they annotate these things so that uh, they know that this is a person, this is a stop sign. And then there's some stuff that you're saying that needs to be filtered out. So what would Manit filter out for in that example? Manot will filter out the environment where the self-driving car is going to, to be driven. Uh-huh. And after like observation of, of the environment, Manot will provide the necessary information about the environment. Mm-hmm the features that should be integrated into the model. I see. Would the Manot user beforehand be saying what those features are? No, no. Okay. The thing is that uh, the product owner of that model, initially, he doesn't know anything regarding right. that feature. So we are helping them to have it and integrate it into the pipeline. So this is something like can be integrated into data acquisition and model uh, development pipeline of any enterprise that are dealing with computer vision, at this point, computer vision problems. Got it. Okay. Are you guys specialized in any type of data? For instance, I remember a few months ago, you would speak a lot about aerial data, Mm -hmm. or is it now more of a general platform? It's not general. Currently, we, we are taking the verticals of drone like, again, aerial data, surveillance cameras, mm-hmm. and some stuff under automotive, like self-driving cars, because we have some case mm-hmm. from Volkswagen. They had a machine learning computer vision model for their self-driving. But after, like, trying to experiment that self-driving in Berlin, mm-hmm. they have seen that the car doesn't work in Berlin the computer vision part doesn't work because the computer vision part doesn't know anything regarding the Berlin environment. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we are doing, we observe the environment parallelly and say, hey, you need to have this, this, let's say 100 images in your pipeline to improve the accuracy. So the self-driving car can be localized in in Berlin. Does your model compare the data that it has from, let's say, San Francisco with Berlin and then find the missing spots that need to be filled in? We can't say that part, but uh, it's not mandatory. For us, the customer's model, uh, initial training, testing data set can be white and black box. We are not, this is not a requirement, but can be helpful. But uh, even even having like the domain specified, we can handle it. Okay. I'm curious about aerial data. When we talk about uh, aerial data, we often see examples from like farming, large sort of farming corporations in the US will use drones to uh, observe, you know, these massive fields of corn that they have. Is that model something that is applicable here in Armenia, for example, for farming, right? Like the farming industry is a fairly large part of Armenia's economy. Can these types of machine learning models be used to make uh, work more efficient in Armenia? Uh, yeah, not only in Armenia, but in, in general, during our customer discovery process, we had uh, a lot of cases related to the smart agriculture. And of course, they they had this problem, the need exists. Mm -hmm. And in Armenia, unfortunately, this smart agriculture stuff uh, is really new. We need to understand the needs in terms of like, what kind of companies we have that are dealing with smart agriculture stuff so we can understand how we can help them. Of course, this can be integrated, but first we need to understand who are the end users because uh, we are not going to work directly with farmers. The average farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh 
Right. So there needs to be companies in place that exactly. will, they will be the ones working with sort of local farms. Yeah. And then you would work with those companies. So you would be sort of the technology provider. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But the companies that can have some drones and the idea is to have computer vision part and then they need the technology to acquire data, prepare and help the models to improve accuracy to right. for example as you mentioned monitor the crop development right. or i don't know right on the topic of smart agriculture can you sort of give like a, a detailed view of what uh, the, your platform w- would do for that uh, so one more example yeah, yeah imagine there is a there is a drone and uh, we have a computer vision model deployed on the on the drone um, platform mm-hmm. that can be Jetson or yeah. Raspberry Pi, a little bit technical stuff. And the model is trying to analyze the, the disease. Right. Okay. Identification of, of the disease. Disease of the crops. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And the model initially uh, is trained on some data. Mm-hmm. Okay. And here, parallelly, they need to understand what kind of anomalies, what kind of complementary data exists in the real world in the field that that is uh, where the model is going to operate in mm-hmm. and manot logic manot ai will be the technology that can help them to understand the environment and filter out the necessary data mm-hmm. uh, that is missing uh, in training data set yeah. and we will provide it and say hey you need to to take into account these images also because there are some anomalies. There are some complementary features yeah. that should be should part be. of the, yeah. the the data. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's really in order for the model to work, you have to ensure that the data that you have is correct. So that's where you're. That's where you come into the, mm-hmm. the pipeline. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Is Mano deployed today, or do you guys already have users? Or? Currently, we are in process to deliver three proof of concept. I wouldn't say products, but the technology that can be helpful, that can be integrated into data acquisition preparation pipeline of the the mentioned industries. Currently, we are talking to automotive companies like Volkswagen. Yeah. Currently, we are talking to US a yeah. company that that are dealing real estate stuff, like price estimation of the of the houses that that are going to be um, like sold and also uh, there is a case related to the surveillance cameras and they need to identify like they need a platform deployed on the surveillance cameras to detect people Mm -hmm. for you said price estimation for real estate markets Um, is that a vision problem too yeah how does that work it is Uh, so they had a technology that can deal like price recommendation of right. the houses. Like yeah. they buy uh, some houses and then repair and then resell it. Right. And currently what they want in order to estimate the price accurately, they asked how about that we can use uh, aerial imagery. Like yeah. drone will gather capture data of those houses of, the, yeah. of that uh, location. And then we will analyze the images. Okay. For example, uh, the state of roofs, yeah. neighborhood, yeah. a lot of stuff, a lot of features we can gain yeah. from those images. And then we, we saw the, the synergies that we can work on on that kind of problems too. And mm-hmm. currently we have the main, I mentioned about the main expertise, we have experts from real estate. And currently we are trying to understand uh, first the domain. That, they that, operate in. Yeah, that we need uh, like some information we yeah. need to take into account before yeah. before providing that. Yeah. Very cool. So let's talk about your team. How many people are you guys now? Currently, we are five full time members. Uh, we have two contractors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are not full time, but they have their inputs. And yeah, mainly we are engineers. I consider myself <laughs> engineer too at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Doing a PhD in, uh, yeah, in machine and learning, I think you're an engineer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Besides, uh, I'm yeah. doing this uh, CEO. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, one of our team members uh, is in Berlin, I mentioned. She is from business development, sales, marketing, product, yeah. uh, some stuff on there. N- no coding yet. 
Right. But if, if, we, if, we need really need another, <laughs> if we need another engineer, uh, yeah. she, she, will, she will try to help us too. Let me ask you a question. So when you were describing each of your roles, mm -hmm. you, you really wanted to represent yourself as an engineer before a CEO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as a technical person, like you're doing it, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be a scientist when you are. You're already a scientist when you finish <laughs> your PhD. It seems like there's a desire to be involved in sort of the day-to-day -day technical process of the company too are you still able to find time to do that or yeah do you have of to course, just of keep course. the ceo how to <laughs> no no uh, at this point i cannot yes. i'm i'm doing my job related to the ceo yeah a lot of a lot of, a lot of meetings yeah. networking a lot of people uh, massive of emails yeah. uh, also investment raising fund podcasts uh, podcast <laughs> 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 interviews yeah. yeah but of course the the technical part is really really important yeah. and interesting at yeah. least for me and every time i'm trying to be involved at least sometimes uh, we have uh, engineering uh, daily calls and I'm trying to make it too, just Every to be to be in the cool, yeah, <laughs> yeah. in the cool and to see what they are doing, yeah. because it's yeah. really interesting and mm -hmm. imp and also important. That is something that drives the development the, of the company, the, the product, the company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you still get to write code for? Yeah, for okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's great. I think a lot of people they think. You know, doing a startup is as a, like as an engineer, they will do the startup, they will build the product, and they will keep building the product forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But at some point, it comes to the point where, like you were saying, you have to go to investor meetings and you have to go sell yeah. the company. And without and, money, yeah. you cannot <laughs> exactly, yeah. So the product develop yeah. It. And I, I think they, I think they start missing the engineering uh, portion yeah. of, of building. Yeah. Have you guys raised any money yet? Last year, we got two grants from GIZ and High Tech Ministry of Armenia and then a small investment in January from Business Angel. Currently we are raising a fund, pre-seed round uh, and uh, hopefully we will close it soon. Yeah. In two weeks, let's say. I wish you luck with that. Uh, thank um, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a we hear a lot about sort of the global uh, capital markets being very different than they were last year or a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Um, what's it like as a startup raising uh, money now with the sort of global? I don't know if I think recession is the right word, but also mm -hmm. just uh, it's just they're giving out capital harder. They're investing more difficultly than they were before. Yeah, uh, I would say that in general, uh, raising a fund is really is really hard because you need to convince them about your product, about your market. This is a, a matter of numbers and you need to prove it, let's say, to emphasize the facts, a lot of stuff on there. Yeah. But currently, as there is an economic crisis and it has uh, its uh, effect on, on raising fund, um, also we saw some issues related to the sales Because sometimes uh, they are like, hey, we can keep our solution. We can handle the problems yeah. in-house. And the thing is how they are like acting about the new, right. new ideas, new technologies right. that can be really helpful. But at this point, they are, hey... Uh, they, they're trying to be leaner about yeah, how yeah. they spend mm -hmm. their money. That's a difficult problem that yeah. I think startups are, are facing now. Gina, as you guys are closing your round, do you have any hirings for uh, positions in Armenia? Yeah, in terms of hiring, yeah, we will be really glad to have another machine learning engineer in the team. <laughs> yeah, that would be helpful because the solution that we are offering might be getting adapted by competitors. So we need to... Uh, move keep faster, up. yeah, keep it uh, yeah. up and try to bring the product to market as soon as possible. So to be on the safe side, I would say that we need some engineers with background of machine learning, computer vision. Yeah. How can people find out how to apply? Uh, the website is manod.ai. I have my LinkedIn. Right. They can. I'm open to any kind of comment, suggestion, yeah. uh, They can just drop me a line and yeah. Awesome. Okay, Chinag, and let's get to our last question. Uh, where do you hope uh, Manot will be in the next five to ten years? Oh, What five. are your hopes for the yeah. company? The best solution for any AI enterprise. So Manot will help them to understand the environment, will help to improve uh, their models' accuracy, understand the mistakes, the drawbacks of their models. 
Yeah. One of the best uh, solutions that can be chosen. Yeah. Awesome. I wish you luck with that and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much and yeah, I really enjoyed the, this these questions. These are really helpful sometimes. The questions help me to to understand some stuff that I I have uh, missed and yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much.